So, uh, I'm going to start. Um, today I'm going to talk about uh, life after, after hardcore change. And my name is Kohei Yoshida. I'm uh, with uh, Collaborate Productivity. And um, I've been working with this uh, code base, now legal office. And prior to that, I was uh, open office of org since 2004. Um, I sent my first part in 2004. Um, it's still yet to be integrated. <laughs> yeah. um, and I'm originally from Japan. I spent half my life there and uh, moved to the United States in 1996, August 20th. Because um, it was never one day. So uh, I've, been, I've been there ever since. Um, today, I'm going to talk about um, what actually, what change was actually made in CalCore? Uh, I talked about this in the uh, previous conference uh, at Milan. So I'm going to just briefly, briefly go over what was actually done and then uh, move on to talk about what areas of Calc was affected by the change. And then uh, expected was a reality, what I was expecting to happen um, and what actually happened in reality. And, uh, and going forward, um, basically what we can learn from that and then what strategy we need to um, uh, formulate going forward. First, uh, what change was actually made in CalCore? Um, I'm actually reusing this slide from the last year's uh, conference, so uh, some of you have seen this already. So basically this was the old CalCore model, uh, which consisted of basically uh, SC base cell being the uh, the cell object. Um, the base cell object uh, had uh, uh, some uh, um, attribute cell attribute that was shared uh, between uh, five different uh, cell object cell types: a broadcaster, uh, text width, and cell type and script type. And uh, there are five uh, five uh, different cell types that were that were derived from this uh, SC base cell. And value cell stores uh, uh, numeric values, and string cell uh, stores string values. No cell, uh, despite, uh, well, it is called no cell, but it was actually used uh, for something else. Uh, it was actually used to store broadcasters uh, for empty cells. And any cell uh, stored uh, rich text um, uh, string, string values, and formula cell stored um, formulas. Now, after the change, we, we uh, made a, a huge change to this uh, model to basically move from uh, cell object based storage to uh, array based storage. Uh, what the new storage um, stores values is basically it actually uh, uh, stores cell values of the same type uh, in, a, uh, uh, in a single array, uh, which is basically uh, which uh, lives in the memory space as contiguous memory space. Um, we have four uh, array types. Uh, one type stores uh, uh, string, block, uh, string values, uh, which is actually a shared string. I'm going to talk about that later. Uh, one type stores uh, uh, double values, and one type uh, stores any text object, which is uh, basically what was stored in previously uh, SC edit cell. It's uh, basically a rich text uh, string types. And SC formula cell block stores a uh, uh, array of uh, formula cells. The, this class was the only class that was retained uh, before and after the change. And the logic of managing uh, different array types is very, very complex. So we have decided to uh, offset uh, or offload the uh, management of array to MDDS, that's an external library. Um, by adding a new uh, uh, container type, multi type vector to manage uh, the logic of uh, uh, multi array type array storage. So, uh, because the, uh, the, uh, the uh, storage was drastically changed, uh, so did the code that uh, have access to the, uh, the cell storage. And this is how things were done. Uh, things were done uh, in the old way. Old way, let's say, if you want to do uh, something only with formula cells, what we used have to do is to iterate through uh, the cell array and uh, pick up 
uh, query its uh, cell type if it if it equals formula cell and do something with it. The uh, the code is pretty simple, right? But uh, the downside is that if the column mostly consists of numeric cells and maybe two or three formula cells, you have to still iterate uh, every single cell to pick up those uh, few formula cells. Uh, so, so there was a you know a performance cost with it. The new way of handling um, uh, situations like this is basically uh, you still have to iterate through uh, blocks um, to pick up uh, uh, formula blocks, but uh, because you can only deal with it in case the column consists of numeric uh, values and uh, uh, formula cells, you basically deal with two types of uh, blocks. So it's actually much quicker to uh, iterate through maybe two or three blocks as opposed to you know uh, 1,000, 10,000 cells. And uh, everything is pretty much templatized. So what you need to do is to uh, create a uh, handler uh, functional object and then uh, uh, use the process formula, which is a, a templatized function, to uh, just only pick up a formula cells to do something with it. It's pretty simple. OK. Another change that we made is uh, we decided to share the uh, uh, formula talking in uh, array instances which is uh, represented by a uh, SCTOKEN array. The previous, in the previous model, each SC formula cell object uh, would uh, store a unique instance, it, its own instance of SCTOKEN array. Um, and even if all these formula cells contain identical uh, formula array tokens, each of these would have its own instance. Now the new uh, model, after shared formula was implemented, um, we uh, can't detect uh, C formula cells that have identical formula expressions internally, and then group that into a single cell group. And the token array is actually stored inside a, a group object. So if you have, let's say, 10,000 uh, formula cells having all having identical uh, formula expression, uh, it is it is now represented by a single uh, SC token array object. Another change we made, uh, we decided to pull all string instances. Uh, previously, if you have a um, calc document having a, a whole bunch of uh, uh, string contents, and even, even if the, uh, most of the string contents are identical, um, each string, string instance was uh, unique. And we decided to pull all these uh, 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 string instances into a pool, into a pool, a uh, shared pool, and have each shared string uh, instance only store um, pointers to those shared uh, string instances in the pool. And when the string is pulled, we also uh, generate upcase version of the string. Uh, into the pool and store the pointer to it in the shared string instance. Um, this is how uh, we we used to handle uh, string comparison. Uh, that change was mostly done not not because we wanted to save the uh, uh, memory footprint because the OU string was already uh, um, pulled internally, but because we wanted to uh, accelerate. Um, the performance of uh, string comparisons. The old way of uh, comparing two strings was done this way. Uh, if you have to do a case-sensitive uh, uh, string comparison, we first fix the uh, uh, case-sensitive transit uh, literator from SC Global, and then uh, use that to uh, basically do a, a, a raw string comparison. Uh, for case-sensitive um, comparison, we would get um, case in sense of translator and then do the uh, uh, row uh, string comparison. Uh, with the shared string, all you have to do is basically uh, call get data of a uh, uh, shared string, which uh, gives you a pointer to the, uh, the, the shared string instance in the pool, and uh, um, simply uh, compare the uh, uh, pointer values. 
for case insensitive comparisons, uh, you just need to uh, call get data ignore case instead and do the same thing, which is much quicker. So um, the summary of the change is that uh, basically this is the largest refactoring effort done in Calc code. And, uh, and therefore, the, uh, the most critical parts of Calc core have, core have changed. Uh, the the thread was changed, so all the neighboring code that had to access uh, self storage code also had to change in order to make, in order to make things work. Uh, which means that um, with shared formula, we can no longer assume that if you have shared uh, formula cell instance that contains token array, we can assume that uh, the formula cell itself manages the uh, life cycle of uh, token array. And then with shared string, we also have to make sure that all string objects are pulled um, in the shared uh, string pool. And also, um, with the previous uh, cell array, random access to the cell array was actually a constant uh, process, a constant uh, uh, complexity, but we can no longer assume that. So we have to change the algorithm to uh, uh, access uh, cell arrays in order to uh, uh, maintain reasonable performance. Uh, so, what areas was affected? Um, assume this, this uh, big uh, box is the entire calc. To make things simpler, this much was affected. Um, there's a little area where it was not affected. So, that's pretty much sums up 95% uh, of the whole calc core was affected by this change. And of course, this is not scientific. I just came up with a number. I'm probably uh, lying here, but uh, it feels like 95% of the calc core was affected. And what feature was affected? Um, the most affected areas were formula dependency tracking, reference updates, uh, copy and paste, um, and sorting was also affected. Um, Live spell check was yeah one of the first ones uh, that was uh, affected. I think uh, um, this was one of the uh, first bug reports that came in after the uh, uh, core refactoring. Of course, ODS equal export was affected most mostly in terms of performance. Uh, after the, uh, the refactoring, the the import became extremely slow. So uh, we had to uh, change things slightly to uh, retain uh, reasonable performance. Final replace was also affected in terms of performance. Functionality wise, it still should work, but um, in some cases, the performance uh, actually suffered. And uh, this is one of the things that we have yet to fix. Um, also, other areas that, are, that were affected um, include the Excel import export um, for the same reason that uh, all these import export was uh, affected. Also, name range uh, storage was also affected. Um, it caused uh, some pressures that we had to fix. Database range was very similar to name range, so that was also affected as well. Um, some pressures. Uh, cell editing was also uh, affected. Other ones, uh, content rendering, uh, cell comments, those were uh, affected, but not that less severe, actually. These were less severe. Cell comment was affected uh, not necessarily because of the, uh, the core refactoring, but because uh, the core change actually coincided with um, the change that somebody else made to uh, refactor uh, cell comment storage. So that basically um, uh, contributed to the uh, uh, some, some issues. And a uh, whole bunch of other areas are affected. Um, the, the, these ones in the white are uh, affected areas, but uh, we don't see a whole, whole bunch of bug reports uh, for these, so I assume that uh, these are relatively okay for now. And of course, Android and Reader uh, sits on top of everything. And so, and uh, although we actually fixed uh, um, 
much about the video code. I think some folders still assume the old um, cell space, so that's something that we still need to look into. Now, expectation versus reality. Um, so, as I said, uh, this was probably the largest refactoring we ever had to do in Cal Core, and we didn't know what to expect. So, and uh, I later realized that how naive I was uh, going into this uh, whole you know, situation. And let's go over some of the things um, that I realized. Okay, check number one. Um, I naively assumed that, okay, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very careful. You know, when I make code changes, I make sure that, okay, you know, do some due diligence and, you know, to make sure that things don't break, things that, you know, count doesn't crash. So, you know, I was expecting maybe 20 to 5%, 50% of the code change made would cause regressions. Uh, in reality, uh, almost all code changes, basically everything I touched caused some formal regressions, or changes that, you know, users consider to be regressions. So, uh, yeah, that was a... Uh, uh, Big life lesson for me. So, yes, I'll remember this forever. <laughs> um, tech number two, uh, the overall spot is behind us and we just need to fix trivial bugs. So, the, of course, the toughest part was doing the refactoring itself. And that was a nightmare in itself, and that was over. I was happy, and I think I was pretty cheerful. And uh, in the previous presentation, I know in Milan, you know. But um, in reality, uh, the worst part was yet to come. That was just the beginning of the nightmare that would ensue. Uh, lots of medium to large flow of refactoring ensued. And uh, as I said, when the core storage changes, uh, its behavior changes, um, which means that the code that uses the, the, the container also has to change in order to you know, keep things fast. Unfortunately, these areas require uh, medium to large refactoring as well, and I think one of them being uh, the sorting that uh, we eventually did, did uh, prior to the uh, sorting rework. It did work, it didn't crash, but it was extremely slow. But unfortunately, in order to fix that, I also had to just re-implement the whole sorting, uh, not, not the whole thing, but you know, part of the sorting code to, uh, uh, to bring the performance back. That was one of the few ones, and I think the, uh, some of the other ones were um, name range uh, handling that caused crash shows, and uh, that one also unfortunately required uh, medium refactoring, and same as database range, um, yeah. So that was also uh, uh, something that I wasn't expecting or I wasn't hoping would happen. Um, check number three, um, just focus on regression during 4.2 releases and go back to normal for the 403. So refactoring was done in time for 402 release. So my hope was to just to focus on regression um, fixing for 402 releases and just go back to the way it was, you know, uh, after that. Um, but in reality, although we did fix the worst ones in the 402 cycle, Many still remain. Um, the worst ones are behind us, but uh, that doesn't mean there aren't any regressions left for us to uh, work on. So, yeah. What can I do? Um, check number four. Uh, prior to the refactoring, we already had quite a number of unit tests written for Calc. So, um, I was pretty confident that, okay, even though we will probably get uh, quite a number of regressions, you know, uh, most of them will be caught by the, uh, the unit test to keep us safe. In reality, uh, I didn't count this, but I may be lying, but I think, I feel like we ended up doubling the amount of unit tests for CALP during the floor two period alone, and we still don't have enough you know, given that, you know, there are still a whole bunch of uh, regressions uh, reported in Pakistan. So that was also a um, lesson. And check number five. As a responsible coder, I will fix all the bugs my change course. You know, I didn't want to be the bad guy. You know, I didn't want to be the one to break 
things for other thing, other people to pick up and fix. You know, I feel bad about that. You know, I'm a, I'm a human being. You know, people used to say, okay, you break, you know, you break, you fix it. So I try to do that, but you know, it's just too large. You know, I'm a single person. I I need to need sleep. I have only 24 hours maximum. Um, so you know, in reality, we need multiple people who can handle bugs in calco, you know, comfortably. So that's the reality. So, um, so what can we learn from this going forward? So the challenges uh, we still face, uh, basically squats to remain the regressions caused by the core changes. Um, the number's too high. Um, it's actually still not, I, I try to make it sound like it's, it's, it's a disaster, but it's not actually that bad. It's just, uh, you know, we still have a little more to do. Um, basically, uh, gather more people and uh, you know have them become more comfortable handling bug fixes in Calco. Uh, when the core refactoring hit, I think not many people are comfortably comfortable even trying to fix bugs. So you know, I was left with so this huge number of oops. Oh. The other ones on the charge, the charge, there. Yeah? One more question. Can you? Initially, I think I got I got fixed it. I, I got uh, tried to help me, um, but the uh, major ones actually uh, uh, were given to me. So, so that was uh, yeah that was that was a big issue. And uh, I think uh, these days um, I guys hopefully you know feeling more comfortable tackling, and the Marcus is also uh, becoming more comfortable. So it's not as bad as I tried to make it sound like here. But uh, yeah, but still you know we need more people. Uh, who can uh, uh, try to fix bugs? And it, it's an important thing, you know. Uh, just uh, and it's not that difficult, you know. People th may think, okay, you know, fixing cut bugs is it should be left for the, the experts, but that's not the case. So uh, let me try to encourage you. And the uh, third challenge is basically build the culture of writing unit tests for each and every bug fix, not just some bug fixes. If you fix a bug, write a test for it. If you implement the feature, write a whole lot of tests for it so that you know, uh, they don't break. And we need to build this culture to, to basically make it a, uh, I, I don't want to say requirement, but you know, make it just, it, make it common or you know, if you fix a bug, Bug fix won't finish until you write a test. So let's promote that kind of thinking uh, for the inside the, inside the project is what uh, I'm trying to tell here. And uh, of course, to make all that happen, unit test is key. One unit test is what was 20 future bug fixes. Basically, if you write a test, it prevents 20 future bug fixes of the same bug. So even if I understand that you know writing tests is not an easy thing, you know it, it may take actually much more time than fixing the bug itself. It, especially the the bug itself is fixed by only one or two lines of change. Despite that, you know you need to understand that you know this is the minimum that you have to do when you fix a bug. And I already seen that bug. Bug fix does not finish until you write a test. Let's try to promote this kind of thinking. Uh, you can tell yourself every day. 
until it, it sticks in your brain. And writing unit test is a courtesy for your fellow developers. Writing test is not for yourself, but for other developers, so that they don't feel bad about fix, uh, breaking your, you know, uh, bug fixes or features. It's a courtesy. At least that's the way I, I see it. And we really don't have a choice. Uh, if you don't, if you're in a project where writing test is not mandatory, you have to really carefully uh, screen every single comment, every single change that somebody makes to make sure that things don't break. But we really don't have a choice here because you know we try to encourage new uh, coders to come in and encourage them to uh, commit fixes. And uh, with 20 years of history code base, it's not possible to learn every single corner case here just by spending even two or three years. I've been with this code base 10 years, and I don't even know everything. And uh, yeah, I, I get uh, blamed for breaking things left and right that I wasn't really aware. So yeah, that goes to show how difficult this code, code base is. Again, um, <laughs> and I cannot emphasize it enough. So that's why I'm using two slides just for that for this uh, topic. But fix without unit test will get broken again. And I'm just not saying to scare you. It just actually happens, especially now. If you don't write a test, I will probably break that in the next release. So make sure you write a fix. Or somebody else will uh, break, break it. And bug fix with unit test will remain fixed forever. And I keep saying this uh, time and time again. But we need to emphasize this uh, and promote this kind of culture. So this is a question for you. Uh, which one will be your choice? You know, uh, bug fix without uh, unit test or bug fix with unit test? So uh, hopefully uh, you will have the right answer. That's true. Yeah. I have a lot on Mac because apparently the, it must be that many pixels long. It's not true on Mac for some reason. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's a corner case of unit test, but you know, thanks for input. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's all. Uh, if you have any questions. Memory consumption, um, in theory, uh, memory consumption will be reduced because uh, formula tokens are shared. Um, and also, uh, the overhead of uh, cell value storage is also much lower than the previous um, storage model. Having said that, there are always uh, corner cases. There are always some code that still assume the old uh, storage model, in which case the memory uh, requirement may rise temporarily until we fix it. So in theory, uh, memory footprint prints will be uh, much, much uh, lower. But there are some corner cases which that may not be the case. You did have some stats. And you saved like 100 megabytes of 300 or something, wasn't it? With your uh, yeah. Um, in, in some cases, the uh, memory footprint of uh, format tokens alone was reduced from somewhere around 300 megabytes down to 100 megabytes, something like that. Any other questions? So, what are the next steps? Uh, like, um, like uh, Find a customer that wants something cool, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, thank you very much. Cool.